Hey guys, JMN here, welcome to my channel. Um, today I have a kind of special video and I didn't really prepare a script for it, but whatever. Many people of you asked me um, to show my Dion Cray collection through private messages on Reddit or YouTube and I thought, well, let's give it a try. So today I show you my whole Dion Cray collection. I hope you enjoy this, so let's start right with the first CD. This is, of course, go goes or cows or however you want to pronounce it. I'm not really sure about this. This is the limited first press edition, if you see with the red CD, and this very special packaging with two booklets. <clears throat> yeah. Next in line, we have the Macabre or Macabre first press. Uh, also a very special design again here you can see these these kind of um, balls or however you want to call these things yeah and uh, again a very big uh, booklet <coughs> we uh, continue with um, the remix album uh, it's Kai and it basically has a bunch of uh, remixes. Um, I would only recommend this release to um, real hardcore Dion Grey fans because, yeah, it's nothing you really need because, yeah, reasons. <laughs> we continue uh, with Kiso. Some of you may know this from my uh, bootleg tutorial, so I won't open it. This is the bootleg CD and this is the official first press CD. Yeah, with two booklets again, one in English, one in um, Japanese. Next we have a mini album, Six Aki. First press CD again uh, in the sticky pack. Yeah, um, again here's the Obi Stripe and you got uh, the booklet here and then there's also the sticker and, okay. Wait, it's, don't want to destroy it. Ah, yeah. This little flyer for the Dragonfly uh, photo book. Yeah. I will sort this out later, so... We continue with Vulgar. First press in the slipcase. Not really a common thing for official Neon Grey releases, but yeah. Uh, it has a bonus DVD, if I remember correctly, there is the Obscure promo video, uh, but in the censored version. And... No, oh, I need to remember... Ah, there it is. There's some advertising stuff. And on top of it, you got this uh, special English booklet. Um, which translates the lyrics and also has uh, this small introduction text to the band because as you may know together with uh, Withering to Death these were the was one of the first albums to be um, released in European and English versions so they included this little band introduction however this is the Japanese version but they still did it so just a moment now we come to the next album, With a Ring to Death. I got two versions of it. First of all, here is the Japanese um, first press edition. Again, with a very big uh, slipcase and a very big diggy pack. If you open it, you can find this uh, big booklet with all the texts. Yeah, in Japanese and English. Hmm. The reason for um, oh. the reason for having a second copy is the fact that this is, I think, American version. Let's see. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. It's the the American um, licensed version, and it came with a bonus DVD. Uh, which had some um, promo videos with uh, live clips. So yeah, I thought it was interesting to 
have this uh, additional bonus content. As you can see, it's a lot smaller booklet and different color. I think these colors were different for every version. There was also a European version of this CD which had another design of this uh, booklet. Yeah. So, after Within the Death came The Morrow of a Bone. Again, the Japanese first press edition. Um, this is a bit different. You have this call, I don't know if it's still called Digipack or whoever you want to call this kind of thing. They also use this design for the singles uh, on their later releases, but you will see this in uh, just a few minutes. Yeah. Again, you have a booklet, but the design, as you can see, the camera won't catch anything because some of the lyrics are mirrored and also it's a very dark printing on dark background. Yeah. Ah, here is a little advertisement thing going on. Yeah, and then it came with the main CD, with the album, um, and the bonus uh, CD, which had some, um, as you may know, some unplugged versions of uh, Conceived Sorrow, The Pledge, and so on. Three songs in total. Yeah. I must say, this was like the first album uh, which I used to love by Dion Gray. Later on, I continued with Withering to Death. And at the point when I discovered Ouroboros, um, yeah, I just fell for the band because it was so great. Talking about Ouroboros, we continue with the album. Sadly, I don't have the big limited edition with like vinyls and a lot of bonus content. So I only have the. Um, <clears throat> the normal um, limited edition which came also with a similar, a similar design again here the booklet I really wish I had a big one but uh, I couldn't catch it for a cheap price yet so yeah okay some advertisement stuff going on again some tour dates or something yeah and this thing also came with uh, bonus content. Um, let me see, I think. Yeah, again, three unplugged tracks. So I definitely needed these ones in my collection. And on top of it, I also got, uh, um, I think this is the European edition. No, no, this is the American edition again. Made in use a uh, the end records of course it's American yes um, German uh, the European versions were distributed by Gunshin. You have a booklet again, but unlike the other one, you have only the English uh, lyrics in this booklet. Yeah, and then you have uh, the sticky pack thing, uh, which is kind of similar but not exactly the same as the Japanese um, limited edition. Um, the reason for buying this was, let me check, ah, there is a, um, um, a, a bonus um, DVD on this, uh, which features some live clips and stuff like that. Also, a little insight on what tour, uh, uh, Zero 07 tour, The Marrow of a Bone, so yeah. It has some clips and a 4K. Let's get this one. It was cheap on Amazon, so I took this uh, version as well. Still hope that I one day get the original limited first press. Yeah, then came Dumpspear Sparrow, and I only have the European edition of this. Yeah, couldn't buy the Japanese one yet. And it only comes with two bonus tracks, so if you know the first press edition from Japan, it has a lot of more stuff to offer. Yeah, but it also had this nice little, uh, little sticker. And it only has the English lyrics, of course. Yes, then we got a big limited edition, um, the Unraveling. <clears throat> it was this really, really big box. Yeah, here you got... Uh, um, booklet 
English lyrics and all. And then there is the oh, again advertisement stuff. They do a lot of advertisement. Um, never get these uh, in the European editions anymore. A postcard. Yeah, and then all the, the CD and the bonus content. Um, what exactly was on this? Ah, yeah, yeah, you got a bonus disc, as you may know, uh, with the really fantastic um, remake of Macabre. Unraveling Unplugged, the final Unplugged version, really cool. Then you got some shot in one take studio clips and some live clips. Yeah. All in all, a really cool package and I'm really happy that I got my hands on this one. <clears throat> so, now I have to say I didn't get the latest album. As you see from my collection, I really want uh, the very first present limited editions and I couldn't shoot it for a, or get it or buy it for a really cheap price yet. So I'm still waiting till it pops up on Amazon or M eBay for a good price or on some second hand shop. So, so all in all we finished the albums, now we go on to the singles and again here I don't have all of them but still there are a lot. Yeah, first of all Jealous, you all do, uh, this single very very old one, I think like the first one, two tracks. <laughs> and these were the good old days where they were still really deep in the visual case scene. Quite shocking to see how much they changed over all these years. But uh, while I have to say I I um, really like the newer stuff more, but all in all they also had really great tracks uh, tracks back then in their early days. So yeah, if I had to decide, I would take an Ouroboros or Dumbspiro Sparrow over over Ghost or Macabre. But but it's a really tough call because they all were great. Next we have the Miyako single. It's the free will uh, reprint sadly in the West from East West Japan was the first press which came with six stickers. I don't have this one so uh, it's quite a bit sad. I think the same is for the next single, Keor Cube. Again there was a first press by East uh, West Japan with one sticker this time but I only got the, um, how is it called, re-release of this CD. Next we come to one of my all-time favorite tracks by Dion Gray, Ain't Afraid to Die. As you may know, I think they wanted to put it on, was it Macabre or Kishu? I think it was Macabre, but then they decided against it and released it only as a single, because it didn't really fit, um, fit the concept of the album. So yeah, they released it as a single and you may know the video, if not check it out, really one of their best songs and ballads. We continue with Filth, also a very iconic song of them, um, you may remember the music video. Definitely worth to have this, but as all the old singers, they always had some pretty weak b-sides, you know, just some remixes and stuff like that. I'm personally more into um, these new singles where they put some interesting stuff like remakes and, and so on. Another CD, Child Bray, also a pretty cool song, yeah, this was, uh, this has this um, uh, Coca-Cola type of deal as a logo thing going on, which you also know from the um, Six Ugly album. Then we have the Kazumi single, really really great song and I think I think if I remember correctly, I really didn't listen to this for a very long time. This had this had the Fukai remake uh, on it, but I'm not too sure about it yet. So, yeah. But overall, one of the better singles from the old days. Now I have something uh, more special. This is uh, a promo single which was made uh, by Ganshin Records. Uh, for Carbage, uh, here there is Carbage and Koto on this CD. Yeah, 
as you can see, for promotional use only, not for sale. Yeah, and it's just, I think this went to the uh, press and uh, scene DJs and stuff like this. So it, you couldn't really buy this in an official way. I got it for cheap on a second hand shop who primarily uh, sold books, but they also had some CDs and there I randomly found it for like two or three euros, so I thought I'd buy it. Next one, I think this is one of the songs that brought very, very many fans to the band, the final. And if you saw their live shows and they played this song, people always go crazy. It's also a really nice design because if you open it, you can see this little window thing going on. Then here you have uh, the Japanese lyrics on this special sheet and then you can put it in there and you have it like a window. <clears throat> So, just a moment, we continue with the next single in my collection, and that's Clever Sleezoid, or however you want to pronounce it, yeah. The song, uh, if you don't know it, it has a slightly different mix from the album version, and I think they also re-recorded re some parts for the album. So if you get this single, it's basically a different version than the one from the album. So, worth to get it. And also has some uh, free cool life songs from the Withering to Dead uh, Death era. Now we got another promo single. This time The Fatal Believer from Morrow of a Bone. And again, it wasn't for sale. You got this only if you're from the media or something. It was just like a small teaser or preview for the album. Next, uh, Ryoko no Ame, or however you want to pronounce this song. Very cool singer. Here they continue with this uh, small diggy pack thing going on. Yeah, I think it's also... Yeah, here is the, the Obi Stripe. Really cool song, but I have to say it took me a while until I learned to appreciate it. So yeah. The rest are free live songs. The final Mr. News one and Mr. Newsman and other one and you have the English. English and the Japanese vocals. Uh, oh, next. Uh, I don't know really. I think this is the song where many, many, many bands uh, had really, really different opinions about. So when this song was released before um, The Mother of a Bone, people went crazy all for are they going metalcore now? And yeah, that was a really huge. Uh, huge Controversy. Personally, I enjoy this long, uh, song a lot. The album could have a better production, but yeah, I really love this single. And again, there are three live tracks, and you got the uh, English vocals. And I think, yeah, there is the Obi Stripe again. Yeah. Um, I remember. The European version, there was also a European version of the Wingles single, but I don't know exactly which B-sides it had, but I think it were only two B-sides. And it has a slightly different cover than this one, so yeah, you can look it up, so the European cover is different from this one. But it isn't really worth to buy the, the European single if you have this um, limited first press of this uh, Japanese single. Then next one, those in green. Here I'm missing the um, Obi Stripe, which is very sad, but well, what should you do? Yeah. Here you have this, this small text thing. And this was a cool single because it included the Hydra 666 remake, uh, which you nowadays can find on the, how was it called? The Euroboss, uh, Euroboros re-release expanded or however they called it, remastered and expanded. Yeah, it was originally on this single. <clears throat> also, I kind of dislike this because it has this very big and unhandy um, tiki pack. It doesn't really fit the rest of the collection. But whatever. Let's move on. Talking about special packaging. We have glass skin. And yeah, it again has a very different um, packaging from the West one because it's just this yeah, like the promo thing, it's just such a small case and here you have the Obi Stripe this is a sticker, a sticker I believe 
Hmm, some advertisement again. Yeah, CD of course. Uh, a lot of the newer singles and albums have these 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 kind of protection thing in them, which is really cool because your CDs are very safe in them. And of course, we got the lyrics again. And you have the 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 remake of Undecided on this uh, single. So it's definitely worth uh, worth to get this CD. As far as I know, it was released on anything else yet, so yeah. <clears throat> Moving on. Ah, we have another controversial song, but it also gave them a lot of exposure. Hakishisa too. I never really bothered to pronounce the whole thing, and I won't do it in this video as well. So, you have this Digi Pack kind of style. Which I really like. It's like uh, the best design they ever had for their singles, with the slipcase and then the sticky pack thing going on. Yeah, it was released a long, long time for Dum Spirus Barrow. It also has a different mix, and I think, in my opinion, this mix on this single is superior to the album version. And yeah, but oh. <laughs> I also don't think uh, it really fits the album somehow. I think, I think it's still a nice song, but Dumpspear Rosparo was so experimental, and and this this song is so straightforward. It doesn't really fit in my opinion. I sometimes think they should have done it uh, with this single, like with Ain't Afraid to Die, that uh, let it stand alone on the single version only. But whatever. Then you have here this small sticker thing, and again, the Obi stripe. As I said, this is my favorite design, and there's also one reason, because the next two singles had pretty much the same design, so it's great looking if you have it in your CD um, storage, or however you want to call it. Okay, just a moment. I take them both, so basically, here you have Lotus and different scents. As you can see, the same principle. Slipcase, Diggy Back Thingy, Text, Obscure Remake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, personally, I don't know if you're on the side of people who say this version is better or the original one. I like both very, very much. Yeah, and then there should also be. Oh, I thought where's, where's my OP stripe? Ah, there it is. Wait. Oh no, it's just a sticker. Yeah, and this was the sticker going with the single, and I can't really tell you where the Obi Stripe went, but I'm sure I had him as well. Hmm, whatever, whatever, let's move on. <clears throat> Different sense. Also a very, very great thing. I really love this song when it came first, and when it was released first time. Yeah. This was the, um, if I'm correct, this is the, um, uh, Red Soil Live and bonus DVD scenes from recording. Okay, it just has some studio recordings on the bonus DVD. There you have the sticker again. Um, some advertisement for the album. It was, I think it was right before the release, or just a few months between the single and the album, so it was pretty fresh. Not as old as uh, Hakushisa and Lotus. Yeah, and I have to say, really, I really, really like this single, and it's really worth to get this first press uh, version of it because the design is good. The music is good and the bonus content is also enjoyable. Now we come to the next single in my collection. <clears throat> ben Kaku. I don't know, when I listen to this song I always have this uh, always have this Christmas move uh, uh, mood if you understand. I don't know, it's really a uh, calm melodic song but yeah the design of course is superior and 
as you may know, this was uh, designed by Q or Q or however you would pronounce the singer. I am sure there will be someone again in the comments who says I pronounce this wrong. Yeah, this is basically a very big sticker with the um, design of the normal single versions. This is a postcard. This is a booklet. <clears throat> yeah, and here you have the singer CD and the um, bonus DVD. Uh, this was a concert and the bonus DVD. On Tokyo Dome City Hall in 2011. Ah, there was a version of um, Mesohist of Decadence. Ah, oh, I really love this song live. Yeah, and yeah, that's it basically. I think this was a remix by the Resident Evil guy on there. Akira Yama. Akira Yamaoka, what was this guy from Resident Evil or from some gaming franchise, if I re remember correctly? <clears throat> so, and then we come to the last single I have. I didn't get the new one again, and I'm really sad about it because I wanted to um, order it, but I simply forgot it, and then I came too late and was sold out. So, I'm still waiting till the first limited. A limited edition of the new single comes out for a cheap price on second-hand shops, Amazon, eBay or something like this. But because I don't have the new single, my last single is of course Sustained Untruth. Similar design to um, Rinkaku. And I also assume the new single has a similar packaging, but I'm not sure. Ah, here you have this. Postcard set. Really cool designs of all um, band members. <clears throat> okay, sorry, my camera just started, uh, stopped recording, so yay! We were stopped at this postcard, uh, which is a uh, band shot. Which you may know from t-shirt designs from the, I think was it the Tabula Rasa tour or something, uh, and concert flyers and stuff like that. <clears throat> Let me put this back. Oh, maybe I can do this later before, before I destroy it. So, next we got the booklet. Very cool photo shots and design overall. Yeah. And again, a bonus DVD and a CD. Uh, uh, let me see what was interesting about this one. <clears throat> ah, it had. Part of the Tabula Rasa Tour 2013. There are really cool songs on there. You have uh, Deity, you have Macabre, Matsuist of Decadence, Cellos Reverse. Uh, really, really cool live DVD. Really uh, many songs which I uh, like a lot. <clears throat> now that we are finished, um, I will just do. Uh, my DVDs and video cassettes. <clears throat> well, just a moment. Okay, we continue uh, with the video and um, with the music video DVDs. We have this one. Um, <laughs> let me search the title again because I have to admit I just forgot it. Kimon, of course, it was called Kimon. I really forget that one. <laughs> yeah, and it had some music clips like KR Cube, Ain't Afraid to Die, Filth, so all these early uh, singers. The design isn't really the, the best one. It looks kind of cheap and kind of like the Kai CD. Yeah. Here you have the, the lyrics, I think. Yeah, this, these are the lyrics and design of a, of a little figure. Here you have the credits and stuff like that. Okay, this part is creative, but still overall it looks kind of cheap. <laughs> but 
but still silly cool and it also had um, a hidden hidden music video which you could find as an easter egg video which you could find somewhere in the menu but they basically played one remix song and filmed people in the street or something like that if you have the dvd and didn't know about it go check it out yes and then we have of course AOWatch Psycho, you may notice um, it has only four songs Obscure, Zaku, uh, Maid's Fist of Decadence, and a number one, which I don't bother to look up for yet for now. But yeah, the special thing about this was um, their label, um, I think it was at the time it was already Firewall Division or something. They didn't really want to release these four music videos because they only released the uh, censored versions. And so they went to Free Will, um, who released this uh, four track DVD where they had the uncensored version of these songs. So, yeah, if you don't want uh, uh, blacked out pictures in your music videos or something like this, this is the original source where you get a completely director's cut. <clears throat> After this we move on to the um, live cassettes and DVDs and first we have this one I have to take a quick look at the title again it was Mosu uh, Kaku Kaikeki yeah and it's basically a few song parts and a bit of tour footage on this one I uh, can see. I don't know if you even remember these kind of uh, things. In my current home, I don't have a um, player for these. <laughs> yeah, but uh, the guy where I buy bought this from was nice enough to include a DVD rip, which he made on his own, which is very very nice. <clears throat> but I got this somewhere else, and then he had this little flyer thing going on, where I had some tour dates from 1997 till 1998 so yeah these are one of the very first uh, Dion Grey releases after Kaede If Trends next we have this special one which is also uh, pretty rare uh, this is also some tour documentary and footage and it's basically about a macabre deep 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 deeper tour if you're interested in the content of both both music or video cassettes, you can move to my old channel, um, World of Dion Grey, and there I made uploads of the of these video cassettes. So you can check it out there. Next, we have uh, the code of vulgar, uh, vulgarism. You may know this uh, DVD, it's one of the more better known concerts. And this is the limited first press edition, which came with a bonus uh, DVD with even more live stuff. Some people don't even know about this version, but yeah, definitely worth to get a bonus DVD. <clears throat> then we have um, Withers and Withers, Dion Gray. Sadly, only the Gungeon European Edition, so, which is pretty plain and doesn't have any extras or something like that. I wish I had the, the limited first press from Japan, which has like three discs or something, but maybe I will get it in the future. Then, speaking about Japanese first presses, the Rose Trims Again Tour, DVD. Yeah, you have this little booklet which doesn't say anything, just a few uh, concert pictures. And then you have this really massive diggy pack with a total of three discs. There were, was the basic concert, then they got, if I remember correctly, they got um, footage of a, another concert from the other day. And they got a live CD with tracks from both concerts like a best off of this live session if I remember it correctly so yeah oh 
Uhr? No, no, no. Bonus footage. Hmm, I can't really tell now. Maybe I confuse it with the next um, the next live DVD, which I will bring on with. I have again two copies of this. And Dion Grey Uroboros with the proof in the name of the living at Nippon Budokan. Mm. Which comes with even four discs. So you have, I think ah, it looks so great, the outside, this black one, then they have this this design which looks kind of strange. Uh, I, I don't mean the, the, the visual art, I mean the design of the whole package, it looks kind of strange. Yeah, it has four discs. Didn't really watch it for quite some time. Then you have the European version. I bought this first before I um, saw this for a cheap price, so I went with this at first and I didn't really want to sell it, so I still have it. Also has this cool sticker, sticker thing going on. Yeah, it has only two discs, and uh, yeah, it's just a selection of the content. Or I think, wait, let's see, it has like two concerts or something. Whatever. If you have the money, definitely buy this first press edition. <clears throat> but I think you will have to pay like seventy or eighty bucks. I think I got it for 40 or something. I was really lucky. Like most of these CDs, if you take all these first press albums, they are all around 30 to 40 euro and I got most of them for 15 to 20 or something. So it's worth to save some time and uh, have a look out. So now we have the albums, we have the singles, the DVDs. So I'm going on with some related stuff. First, we got the band scores. I only have two of them, first one being uh, Wilga. As you can see, if you want to play the songs, this is the way to go. I tried some of them and yeah, it's really cool to have them, but uh, I didn't really bother to, to look them up too much because you can find the internet enough tabs for Guitar Pro and stuff like this, so it's interesting to have it in the collection, but there are also many people who um, use this as a as a basis for their um, Twitter Pro tabs. Yeah, and then here is the Withering to Death, as you can see the color of the first press album, not the black one like you know from the standard version or the European and American version. Again, all the songs. Really cool gimmick, but yeah. So, next one we have. Maybe I shouldn't include this, but yeah. Uh, I can't, don't even know how I should show it in the camera here exactly. This is the hoodie from uh, Paradox of Retaliation Tour. Really cool design, which I can't really show you from here. So <laughs> I hope you can assume it. Yeah. And Dion Gray and on the front. So I also have uh, a Dior Grey shirt, but I don't have it here, so I don't bother to include it in the video. Yeah, moving on to related bands. Um, we have Sugikyo, or however you pronounce it, maybe I'd say it wrong again. Yeah, here you have Immortalis, uh, first press limited edition, not the, the online pre-order edition, but yeah, which came with a t-shirt, I think two discs or three discs yeah and really cool design the sticky book or however you want to call it it also comes with english translations which is pretty pretty cool of silver q i don't have more stuff so if i find it for cheap i may get it also decays i don't have the money for this i'm just a student so <laughs> i get what i can but i can't afford everything from suki q i also have um this Ame, Amegari no Yushi, or however you pronounce it. Uh, I think a really, really cool design on this shirt, so yeah. Definitely uh, worth the money, even if the color is a bit strange with this uh, pink theme going on. So now we got something very old. For once, we have the Luciel single by Lasadis, if you know. This was the 
uh, previous band of Dion Gray with pretty much all the members except Toshia. Yeah. Kisagi at the time uh, played bass, which you know from like thousand different bands he played afterwards. Hmm. There are multiple theories why they didn't get along, but we shouldn't assume too much. He just left the band. They found a death mask, renamed to Dion Gray, and the rest is history, right? So you got two songs on this one, and a very very small booklet with the Japanese lyrics of both songs. And last, uh, the last thing is um, a demo cassette. Um, what was the di uh, title again? Let me look it up. It was um, Genkaku no Hana. Basically just one song from uh, Kiwa's old band Masquerade. I'm not exactly sure. The, the one who sold me this one um, said it's an original. It is definitely missing um, a small sheet which came with the lyrics and a band photo. So yeah. It kind of looks real, so I hope it's an original. Yeah. So this is kind of the treasure in my collection. Until someone says this isn't the original one. So yeah. That's it. This was my whole collection. I hope you enjoyed this and also you are okay with my commentary because I couldn't make a script for this one. And I was just talking, so yeah. However, Thanks again for watching this video. If you want to see more content about Japanese music, you can subscribe to my Twitter or follow me on YouTube. Uh, would be really good if you could leave a thumbs up or a subscription. Yeah, that's everything I have to say. Thank you for tuning in and goodbye.